Yeah, here's Red Sox Yankees. Yep. Yeah. Get this whole Yankee suck thing. You can be at a bar mitzvah or a wedding or a first communion here. Yankee suck break out in the back of the church these days. When the Patriots had their super well, you know, this is a big rival right there. Yeah. It's one of Yeah. This all does go back to Babe Ruth. Sure does. Smiling. The rivalry between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Jerry Coleman, the Colonel. The Babe Ruth. He would later become the Padres broadcaster. Yeah, Shohei Otani would be today's generation two-way player. There, he was a centerpiece of perhaps the league's best team. Red Sox were one of the dominant teams in the early years of the American League. Fenway was kind of a good luck place, which is amazing to think of now. Then along came Fenway is baseball's oldest ballpark. Yankee Stadium. The Yankees have won 26 world titles since Ruth joined the team, making the trade a defining moment in their history. The Red Sox have followed quite a different path. Of course, they've never won since, and um, that's known as Curse of the Bambino. It's a curse from which Boston fans have never escaped. Every home run Ruth hit was another dagger in their heart. Babe Ruth made the Yankees. Had Babe Ruth done all that in Boston, history would be a little different. Ruth hit 60 home runs in 1927, more than the entire Boston team. That same year, the Bambino also helped lead the Yankees to their second World Series title. Behind Ruth, and a litany of great players throughout the Murder's year. Row. The Yankees left the Red Sox in their wake. With each generation, a new star would emerge. Joe DiMaggio, after Ruth, the greatest athlete personality in the country, and he was. He was tremendous. And Joe DiMaggio was born in California, too. Yeah, Ted Williams was born in San Diego. Ted Williams and Joe D, the Boston-New York battle lines were drawn once again. And one year was special. 41. Remember, 1941. 80 years now. That was when Ted hit 406. The last man to hit 400. Yeah, I don't think we'll see that for quite some time. I mean, how could you doubt that? You know, I couldn't be jealous over his hitting. And why should he be? Joe had a record 56 game hitting streak. I never saw a better right handed hitter and uh, never saw a better player. Yeah. The yeah, we don't think we'll see that e either. Even in 1941. Most yeah, it's hard to bat 400, and it's then they both headed off to war. and it's it, and it's hard to uh, hit in 50 straight games. Began to once again. Us, right? Yeah, so well, baseball is a lot different now than it was back in '41. And yes, both and the, the Yankee Clipper and the Split and Splitter would go to war.
Yeah, after World War II, the rivalry was popular again. Yogi Berra. New York itself took it for granted. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be every year. It's hard to have a rivalry when one team is always on top. But come the late 1960s, new seeds were sown, and they soon took root. You come into the early 70s, and we're both good again. You had Thurman Munson and Carlton Fisk, which was a perfect embodiment for the rivalry. Like you had with Ted and DiMaggio then, you had the two catchers. You had Munson versus Fisk. That was huge. You know, they didn't care for Yeah, Fred Lynn. Much. I hate to use the word, but there was some hatred. Would win the they 1975 slides in a home plate. American it's League MVP and Rookie of the Year. Intense in the stands and on the field. Here comes the throw. Does he hold on to it? Lou Pinella and Carl Fisk. Fisk came right over to me, and he said, we don't talk to the Yankees around here. And he was serious. He wasn't kidding, you know. And so I said, right, now I get a pretty good idea how much he dislikes uh, anybody in pinstripes. There's a lot of adjectives being thrown around, hatred, etc. Yeah, Carlton Fisk would hit that home run in the 75 series. So maybe they took it personally toward us because there's... Yeah, Greg Nettles is also a San Diego native. It didn't hurt that there were a few celebrated fights. Only Greg Nettles comes to mind immediately. All the elements were there for the rivalry to be back. Still, the Yankees won. In the middle 70s, the average was about 95, 97 wins a year for three years, and they didn't win a, a division because we beat them every year. To make matters worse, they did so behind a pitcher who not only came from Boston, he was helped by Boston's best. Ted Williams comes in, and he says, I knew every time Sparky you Lyle. a curveball because you do something with your thumb. <laughs> and he started showing me how to throw the slider. And he says, if you're going to get to the big leagues, you got to throw that pitch. It seemed to work. Then I just threw it for 16 years. Took him out. The rivalry would reach its peak in 1978. Yeah. All the ingredients were in place. And Ron Guidry. The collision course was simply inevitable. Star-studded lineups, both teams vying for a championship. It was a World Series atmosphere. Yeah, they would sell out too. Of course, early in the year, it didn't seem as if the Yankees had a chance. We had a terrific first half of the season. Everything we did went right. We just beat teams up. Was this Boston's of course, this was released in 2004. This was way before smartphones and social media. Yeah, back then we had regular analog cameras. And we didn't really have camcorders back then either. Yeah. Ron Guidry would win the Cy Young Award that year. Yeah, Willie Randolph would get injured during the 78 season. And Brian Doyle would be his replacement come the playoffs. Ready to rumble. They did on the final day to tie the Yankees for first. We go to tomorrow. We go to tomorrow. It was just as though the stars were all aligned in the right pattern that this is the way this season is destined to end. A one-game playoff was needed to crown the division champ at Boston Structure. That's good. It's a home run. One game playoff. And a home run for Yastrzemski. Boston maintained its lead. For Mike Torres was throwing shutout ball. Yeah. Shutout. Don't tell me. They, they can't yeah, Carl Yastrzemski won the triple crown in 67. It just didn't seem like we were going to get any runs. He was getting everybody out. Then came the seventh. Yeah, and Bucky Dent. He only had like four home runs that year. Two outs. Yankees down, two nothing. Fouled off his foot. Bucky got some first aid for both his ankle and his back. I saw a crack bat. I said, hey, is that crack here? The bat boy brings Bucky a new bat. He'll exchange bats. So is it a curse or just magic? 
The count's one and one. Two outs and two on. The Red Sox lead at 2 nothing. That's Bill White with the call. at the play. Now, if this had been anybody anywhere but Boston, Yastrzemski would have hit the ball over. The Red Sox would have won. Yeah, uh, Greg Nettles. And Goose Gossage with the save. Ron Guidry wins his 25th game that year. Before wild cards existed. Yeah, back in those days, it was just East and Western divisions. Yeah. Can't get past. 